The climate crisis has affected one of the most traditional industries of the Mediterranean. The region, synonymous with olive oil, has been suffering a drought with production hit by extreme weather conditions this year. Spain, which accounts for 50% of the world's olive oil supply, was affected by heat waves and raging wildfires, causing a production drop of 48%. Meanwhile, another large producer, Italy, suffered severe droughts, hailstorms, as well as a bacterial disease called olive Ebola, which ruined harvests. And the shortage has more than doubled the global retail price of olive oil. To keep up with the demand, Europe has been forced to import oil from South America. But the situation in Turkey is vastly different. With a record high production last year, Turkey became the second largest producer of olive oil in the world. But bulk exports have been banned for three consecutive years to stabilize local prices. Packaged and boxed olive oil exports are allowed and have seen sharp increases this year. According to a Turkish export buddy, olive oil exports have risen by 190% in the first six months of this year compared to last. And now to further discuss Europe's olive oil supply. Joining me from Switzerland is Guido Cosi. He is a professor at St. Gallen University and from Istanbul. Murat Ferman, he is a professor at Bekant University. A warm welcome to you both and thanks for joining me on Straight Talk. So Guido, global olive oil production has declined for a second consecutive year uh, in the Mediterranean basin countries. How alarming is this? Well, this is alarming clearly um, uh, because first of all, there is, this is an industry that is very important. I, 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 I am actually originally from Italy, so for me it's really touching that our our uh, one of our beloved industry is in crisis. Also because there are many small firms that depend on that, and it's not easy to say maybe you know the best firms will survive and the worst will not, uh, because actually this is this is not the case here, uh, because we have a crisis that can also last long, because it's also related to uh, to the climate change. Uh, and, and also, uh, particularly for Italy, for example, there are also issues with parasites that are afflicting all, uh, all uh, firms at the same moment. So, Murat, can this steep decline in supplies uh, only be explained, as uh, Guido mentioned, by the heat and drought caused by the climate crisis, or are there any external factors? Well, the first and foremost, uh, some experts clearly indicate that it has been the worst case scenario regarding the production and environmental related uh, conditions in the last 500 years. I'm not sure if this is an exaggeration or not, but uh, clearly uh, there are many other factors, in fact, when it comes to any kind of a product uh, who, which has uh, won the hearts and minds of consumers all over the world. And of course, uh, as my dear colleague said, that we always uh, give a high esteem to olive uh, trees and olive oil. As a matter of fact, each and every olive tree is sanctioned and protected under law in my country. So therefore, um, unfortunately, uh, th those kind of uh, unwanted extreme heat, drought uh, and uh, wildfires, uh, in addition to all of these um, environmental uh, pollution issues, uh, must have contributed to this uh, mm. sad situation. Uh, however, there might be some other uh, tactical issues uh, in game, which we shall discuss in a moment, hopefully. So, Guido, didn't giant producers like Spain and Italy uh, see this coming before? I mean, haven't they taken any precautions? Well, unfortunately, not so much, actually. You know, it, 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 everyone hopes it just a weather shock only lasts one one year or maybe two. Uh, and we, are, we, as a macroeconomist, we are used to even model, mathematical models, weather shocks and something that happens randomly and then goes away. Unfortunately, here, I fear it's something that is changing and is going to be more persistent. So uh, they are doing. They are trying to improve uh, uh, the quality of oil. They are doing uh, co promotional campaigns. There is some support uh, for oil producers. However, um, there was there was a general attitude of waiting and hoping, which is not helpful in this case. Mm. So, Murat, even if countries like Spain and Italy reach their production targets under these circumstances, how would that impact the olive oil prices? Because we know that the prices have hit over nine thousand uh, dollars per metric ton. And this is, I guess, is the highest uh, price uh, this product has seen since 1997. So where is this headed? 
That's right. Uh, on one hand, uh, olive oil is a product. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's a very deeply touching and uh, special product. Uh, we cherish it. We use it. It has already become a part of our life routines, uh, the very uh, cooking arrangements, uh, the Mediterranean lifestyle, so on and so forth. So olive oil, uh, for all of these um, uh, virtues and benefits, uh, although it's, it's, it's a commodity, uh, one tends to deal uh, with olive oil in a much more delicate fashion. And uh, Aisha, uh, indeed, uh, you are correct, uh, pointing out that now we are observing the highest ever uh, price levels in the last uh, uh, 20 years. Uh, the prices uh, from Andalusia uh, have reached to 8.45, 8 euros and 45 cents. Uh, per kilogram. Yes. And this uh, really uh, created a steep increase in uh, so-called retail prices, mm -hmm. uh, over-the-shelf prices. Uh, that's an undeniable fact, that's for sure. And of course, for because of the specialty of this product, there is the old corp or the new uh, yield. Uh, so... Yes. Uh, uh, so that's that's another uh, important uh, issue. Uh, carry over stock and a fresh yield. And most of the enthusiasts of olive oil always uh, look for uh, the fresh uh, fresh uh, harvest. Yes. Uh, for example, uh, my wife did not lose uh, any minute in the last week uh, to really go and hunt for the new uh, harvest, uh, you know, uh, yes. so that she can stock up for the coming year. But I wonder if this is sustainable. So Guido, what would the international olive oil market look like if the pace uh, of this depletion continues? I mean, um, how would this figure add to the already strained vulnerable economies across the region? Well, actually, yeah, it will become more and more a niche, a luxury good. Uh, even now, at the moment, I mean, compared to all the other oils present, it's just about 2% of, of, of the oils. Of course, you know, palm and soy oil are much more frequent. And obviously, what we are fearing is that this high cost that transfers into high uh, prices uh, for the for the industry, for uh, for the old food industry and for the restoration industry and so on may change the attitudes of the people. So if, if at the moment the demand is not very elastic, so demand is not contracting as much as the prices are increasing in proportion, still in the longer run, uh, people may change uh, tastes and try to use, uh, you know, even for cooking, uh, also in the restoration industry, other oils. And this is not going to be uh, good, actually. So, Murat, last year, Turkey produced uh, 421,000 tons of olive oil, becoming the uh, second largest producer in the world. So what were the factors behind this significant rise? And is this sustainable for the years to come? Uh, well, um, when it comes to olive oil, I must say that I cannot hide uh, my objectivity. Uh, I cannot help my objectivity high uh, and, uh, as they say, um, uh, neutral, uh, because olive oil is a very sentimental thing to, in our culture. Uh, yet, yes, as you have mentioned, last year Turkey has a, a record-breaking uh, yield uh, more than 400,000 uh, tons. However, unfortunately, uh, this year, uh, we do not seem to have uh, the same uh, performance. Uh, mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, we have uh, some kind of estimates that we will end up uh, yeah, having a yield of uh, 180,000 tons again, yes. which uh, seems to be uh, a, a steep decline uh, in comparison to last year's record-breaking volumes. But uh, we know, uh, according to the statements of the President of National uh, olive, uh, olive and Olive Oil Council, that we have a carryover stock uh, at the, around the same uh, amount. Mm -hmm. uh, Barely less than 200,000 uh, kilograms. Therefore, uh, producers and growers uh, clearly indicate uh, of uh, abolishing or uh, getting rid of, if you may, uh, the ongoing uh, blockage. Yes. Uh, 
per uh, Turkey's exports regarding the oil. But uh, if and when you ask me what was the reason for that, uh, I kept asking the producers. They say uh, it's uh, only uh, nature's work. Uh, what can you do? Kind of a stuff. So, Guda, uh, from a, a Turkey's perspective, uh, Turkish officials say that this year's uh, country's olive oil stocks combined with new production would be enough uh, to meet domestic demands. And they also floated the idea that, as uh, Murat just mentioned, Turkey could resume bulk exports. So is this a short-term thinking? Is bulk exporting a viable method for the country's olive oil industry? Well, I hope for Turkey that this is not short term, of course, and I actually also hope for Europe. Unfortunately, Euro Turkey is not in the European Union, otherwise we would secure uh, the export from Turkey uh, more more continuously. However, uh, it is important to take precautions, and, and now also in, in Italy and Spain, uh, actually the, the emergency is to guarantee water supply, to move up uh, the, the technology used in the oil production, so modernization is important because it, it, it is random, you know, this shock may hit in the future uh, uh, different countries, including Turkey. So it is important to prepare and to try to upgrade and to see all the all the potentially risk um, aspects that, uh, that should be should be with some degree, of course, or, 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 you know, reason addressed. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.